Hey out there, this is Thursday, January 2nd, 2020. Happy New Year, everyone. You notice how I say it, not like so many people will say Happy New Year. They'll just say it like it's a one-night affair, right? Happy New Year! But, uh, you know, there's a whole 365 days of the New Year, so have a happy 365 days, or at least as best as possible. It is... Uh, in my estimation, more than a right to pursue happiness that Americans have, and by extension, that would be the rest of the planet. All of civilization, in my estimation, has the right to pursue happiness. And greater than the right to pursue happiness, we have a responsibility, a duty, an obligation to pursue happiness. And uh, I think that's a beautiful thing. I think it's a godly instinct we have is that uh, we strive to be happy. You know, we want to be, what, free. We know there's absolutely certain components that are involved in our happiness. And, um, and we cannot be content. And if we're not content, we can't be happy. So we want to be free, and freedom is being an absolute term in regard to the cost of something. Well, it doesn't get cheaper than free, right? And that is what we should strive for, is to have our cost, because cost can be translated to burden, the price we pay, which will be twisted by the Decepticon media types to make you believe that it's a good thing. It's value that, hey, you know what? Just forget about the effect your your value of your house, you know, went up for no good reason. Uh, that's a good thing. Well, for you, in your estimate, tell you it's a good thing, but it's short-sighted. And uh, in the long run, you can see where that all goes. It goes into... Uh, higher and higher cost of living, which is translated cost to exist and burden. So, no, we want a low cost of living. We want to strive for it. Now, in the past, life was very difficult in many different ways for human beings. That was pre-industrial age, when we found very simple methods to produce an abundance of an array of things that we want and need and uh, that was the object to make our lives easier because who wants difficulty I mean if you can get machines to do the work that used to have to be done manually I mean who in the right mind wouldn't seek that so it's a very normal offshoot of human evolution is that we develop technology Ways to make our lives easier, less stressful, less burdensome, lower a lower price to pay in terms of blood, sweat, and tears. So knowing that happiness and this whole new year, people say happy new year, you know, like it's an overnight, just have a, you know, get drunk and, and you know, let bygones be bygones and make some resolutions and be a better human being and happier and all that at least for the year or as far as you can get, you know. But happiness is serious business, and it is, it is a nebulous term, and it is comprised of many different facets, components, ingredients. And uh, being financially free is one of those components that unless we are financially free, well, in that regard, we aren't free. So we're not free. It's as simple as that. You either are free or you are not free. Remember, it's an absolute term. In order to be truly free, you must be absolutely free. And in order to be happy, we have to be absolutely, totally free. So we can't be that way as long as we have a financial burden hanging over our head. And this is a very serious thing. This involves our very security. And when you lack security, you're in a state of fear. Do you understand? It's a very intimidating. 
So we're all basically coerced through arbitrary means uh, by the top dogs, the, the people at the top of this perverted pyramid of power that's all run by money. It's run by evil, dark, satanic forces for the most part. It's very cut and dry, very simple to see. And when you really see the picture from God's point of view, see the perceptive, the perception, the perspective from his point of view, you understand that it is perverse. And this is why it's written in Scripture that those things that are highly valued among men are often, often detestable in the sight of God. And it is really that simple. And so, you know, I really want the theme today to be helping people to understand what's going on here, this schism, and what is the nuvo or new civil war that we can expect. Um, that this, what we're talking about here is something biblical. Uh, the book of Daniel is a short 12-chapter book in the Bible, Old Testament. But it was a book that is said to be preserved to be understood to, from to, at the last days only that nobody really understood the full meaning of what Daniel was trying to convey until we started seeing the signs falling into place upon the earth and this is why you hear so many preachers saying hey the end of the age is near I mean we're talking about a big deal the return of Christ we're talking about monumental unprecedented never before seen sea changes of biblical proportions and the great thing about this for the righteous people is that it's here to stay. That's the difference between a bloody revolution. You see what's going on in Iraq, we hear there's more trouble now. I mean, well, what did we expect? That, you know, insanity to prevail? I mean, I call them the three Bs. Did we think that was going to succeed like where it never did before? That, that is uh, the bullets, bombs, and blood, okay? Uh, no, it's going to be the very hand of God. We need God in this mix. And this is what was ch what is changing. Daniel says something very important. He talks about the knowledge upon the earth being greatly increased. And technology is a part of that knowledge. You see, we're all, we're all getting smart because we've got the internet at our fingertips. We've got the information of the ages since as far back as recorded history, the dawn of creation. And we ha each individually have an obligation to decipher it for ourselves. To be interested, to say, wow, what is our destiny as humans? Are we really these cosmic, eternal creatures and we can't get off this merry-go-round and the very best that we can ever hope to do is to, uh, is to get comfortable with it, to find a way. And this is where, you know, it comes back to happiness, you know, to, to be happy. We want to be happy. So what are those elements that are bugging us? Well, I could tell you straight up. There's two categories for the things that bug me. And I, I really do think I'm no different from anybody else in this regard. Okay, we've got organic issues that we all suffer, and they're across the board. And they're bad. They're as bad as it gets. It's as bad as death. I mean, that's as serious as a heart attack. It doesn't get more serious than death, right? We would all agree. That's a big deal. Okay, we might not even care that much about our own lives, but certainly there's somebody that we care about more than our own life, and they, a lot. That, that, that's the worst possible thing that could ever happen, befall us, is somebody dying. That's organic suffering. That's across the board. That's what I refer to as, at least temporarily, necessary suffering. And then the other category is unnecessary, artificial invented suffering, manufactured suffering. This is things like planned austerity. This is being handed down to the people at large. Just those that, that, that they're undeserving of having this handed. This is, this is tyranny. This is how their freedom is being stolen. It's through monetary means. Okay, it's all about these money masters of misery and their political cohorts. It's the gangster, bankster, traitorous politico class that has done this to Americans and by extension the rest of the world because America is like it or not the most influential nation on earth the rest of the world is looking to us okay we are supposed to be that beacon on the hill that shining light example for the rest of the world to follow for those great virtuous values those precious precepts 
okay, like freedom and liberty, justice for all, all those good God-given constitutional rights, our Bill of Rights, right? It's a beautiful thing. And that's why I say, believe me, I'm no xenophobe. I admire people that admire, admire America for her values, okay, but not for what we've become. Now, I've had discussions with my Palestinian friend. He works at the tobacco shop I go to. We talk about everything. Nothing's off the table for him and I. But, uh, you know, he, he points out, he, he puts me to shame. He loves to tell me how there's no homelessness in Palestine. And I'm thinking, does this guy know he's talking to? I mean, he's a younger, 15 years. I, I've got 15 years on him. But, you know, does he know, you know, how I feel? I mean, and I talk to him. You know, he's he's so defensive of America. He just thinks, oh, you're so lucky. And, you know, he, he's coming from an entirely different perspective. Okay, being born and raised in Palestine and coming here. And I could say, I agree that, you know, America, he's a, it's the best country in the world and all. And I, hey, look, but, you know, he's got to understand history. He's got to understand how far this country's fallen and how I've got an obligation to fight this good fight. Okay, you know, we get into everything. We talk about religion. I, you know, I talk about, you know, because there's this big schism with the Shias and the and the Sunnis over there. You know, the Sunnis think they're the right group and the Shias, you know, it's kind of their elitist a little, you know, because they got the direct descent of, uh, descent of Muhammad. They got the blood of Muhammad in them and all this stuff. And, you know, to me, it reminds me, because I like to educate him, because he never even seems to have heard about, he was never educated in school, whatever, about the schism between Catholics and Christians in America. And at one point, how America only simply tolerated Catholicism. you, you got to understand the history of the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, but he, this was all news to him. It sounded like I was just making stuff up, trying to be sensational and, and you know, conversation start or something. I mean, but then I pointed out, look, it's the same thing with the Jews. You got your Judaistic Jews who believe solely that Moses was their guy. End of story. Ten Commandments. That's that. Basically, that's Judaism. Okay, and then you got the Messianic Jews who believe that, indeed, Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah. Don't wait for a new Messiah. This is it. And, you know, Malawi, it's very interesting. You know, I get into these deep, profound conversations. They're very educational. You know, I like to point out to Malawi, I say, hey, listen, you know, we ought to you know, imagine ourselves as brothers and just trade places. Imagine that it was you that was born in Los Angeles, California in 1958, and I was born in Palestine. And how different, you know, just because of where we were brought up, how different of people we would be. But the point is, is that, uh, you know, it's good to embrace the differences. And I admire people that admire America for her values. But you've got to admit, we've fallen and we can't accept this. Do you understand? And, you know, people want to defend the baby boomers. And I got all mad at the commentator on CBS Sunday Morning who was, you know, vaunting the accomplishments of the baby boomers. I think, oh, my God, we dropped the ball so bad. I am absolutely ashamed. And I am a part of that generation.